So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone from uh, wherever you're joining us from. I think we'll um, kick off the webinar now that it's uh, 3 p.m. sharp. Uh, we'll start with some introductions and then we'll have hand over to our speaker today. So uh, my name is Johanna Siliakus and I work uh, for the Transport Sector Office at the Asian Development Bank. And I would like to warmly welcome you to this webinar uh, on green financing uh, for electric vehicles by uh, Oslem Kildir. And the webinar series is presented under the umbrella of the e-mobility support and investment platform for Asia and the Pacific. Um, that platform aims to build capacities and support scaling up of financing to e-mobility initiatives. And it's uh, operated by ADB and financed by the Global Environment Facility, Jeff. And financing is often seen as one of the key barriers to accelerating e-mobility in the Asia and the Pacific region, as well as in other regions. And financing has also been uh, one of the key interests um, that you have um, as platform members raised based on the survey that we have conducted um, as part of the platform. Um, and it seems that um, platform members are really interested to find out about available financing solutions. So with this in mind, um, in this webinar, we'll dive deeper on the topic of green bonds as part of uh, green financing, um, as well as some uh, blended finance solutions with some examples provided from the Central Asia region. And uh, if you want to join the e-mobility community under the platform, um, um, and in order to stay up to date on platform activities, um, et cetera, so please fill in our survey, which I just mentioned uh, that we got some results uh, from already. But in case you have not yet filled it in, you'll find the QR code now on the screen uh, and you can leave us your contact details uh, for, for staying up to date on the platform activities. We'll also post the link to the survey in the chat soon. Um, and actually, this is our second um, to last webinar for this year. Uh, so next week, we'll have our last webinar for the year, and we'll hear about EV roadmap development. Um, we'll also be sharing the Zoom registration link um, for this webinar in the chat very soon. And um, we'll go on an end of the year break, and we'll resume again next year with a new series and keep you posted on uh, on the next year's webinars as soon as we have the program finalized for that. So today's session will be moderated by Tom Fleming from our implementation partner, Integrated Transport Planning. So Tom, I'll hand over to you to lead us through the rest of the session. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Joanna. Um, I'm not sure if I can have the, if I can have the next, next slide. Uh, Perfect. There we go. Um, yeah, so uh, welcome, everybody. Hello. Um, welcome to this webinar. Um, those of you who have joined us before will be, be aware of our, our webinar house rules. Um, the usual, usual rules apply. So uh, your microphones will be muted during the course of the, of the presentation, um, but there'll be an opportunity to drop uh, questions in the Q&A function um, and uh, to, be, to be posed by my, myself at the, at the end um, within that part of that Q&A session. Um, and you'll be able to raise raise your hand at the end as well if you'd rather ask a question in person and um, we'll open up the mics at that point and and bring you in um so please please feel free to to or please do think of think of anything you'd like to ask during the course of the session um and and do drop them in the in the q a and we'll we'll respond to them uh, at, at that point um next slide please um yeah so as as Joanna mentioned at the top we're, we're really uh, pleased to be able to welcome uh, Oslem Kildir uh, to to the floor uh, today. So Oslem is, is founder and chief executive officer of Pro Finstance. Uh, she's a prominent project financier providing a wide range of, of services for corporate and mid-sized companies and has extensive public and private sector experience um, of innovative green financing mechanisms. Uh, this includes project finance, climate and green finance, renewable energy, energy efficiency financing, PPP models, infrastructure financing, credit risk and um, structuring loans uh, amongst amongst many others. So, uh, Oslem, I will I'll hand over to you. Um, welcome, and um, please do share your share your slides and, and take them. Yeah, thank you very much, Tom and Joanna, for the introductions. Actually, I will now put on the slide, and hopefully, if everything is good, we'll continue yes, with can, the content. Perfect, Oslem. 
Okay, great. Uh, thanks again for welcoming me uh, to this uh, actually event and the uh, broader platform uh, activities. So today's topic is mainly green financing, but uh, what we will try to do in terms of the green financing spectrum is understanding which areas are more prevalent in the EV market because it affects how the market is developed in different countries and how we can actually adapt to the financing mechanisms in the development path. And of course, there are some global market trends in the market itself, the EV market itself, that is actually affecting how we are structuring financing mechanisms. And between, of course, this perspective of climate finance, uh, clean transport is one of the most important project types. So we want to tap more the cl clean finance uh, opportunities through EV development and adaptation. And uh, we will try to actually focus together on mainly the green bond part. But of course, every green bond eventually leads to loan structures in the market, which are either transferred to corporates, public sector, private sector, or SME, even micro segments, which are a broader uh, segment. And uh, as it is with the climate finance market, and as we are discussing through to the new uh, COP event, uh, there is still a huge gap in terms of climate finance and specifically EV market development. So we need to address these gaps through some policy changes or uh, financing mechanisms, which facilitate uh, our actually works towards closing these gaps. And I will try to give some examples which could be actually useful for you in terms of implementing projects or structuring projects, depending on the role and uh, your work towards the EV market. So to begin with, actually, it's important to understand uh, where this market, which types of financings we are able to perform in the EV market, because it is actually a full sector with ecosystem mapping and different uh, parties into it. So we can actually implement different mechanisms. For example, the EV users, which are mainly funded through consumer finance, while we the purchases of companies are structured through corporate and SME finance. And we can go to big scale EV investments, both in upstream and downstream, which can be funded through project finance mechanisms like uh, direct EV production, battery production, or EV-related car equipment production kind of projects. Uh, of course, the supply chain is very critical in the EV market development and how you form a supply, uh, sustainable supply chain. So there comes into the scene supply chain financing mechanisms. And every time when we are developing the market through financing mechanisms, of course, the preliminary investment to do is in terms of infrastructure investment to support the development, which is mainly at the government side in some countries, in some other countries, public-private partnerships are in place. So we are mainly using project finance and PPP mechanisms to support that development. And of course, uh, in terms of municipality or public finance, we see the EV market in city mobility developments. So investments in electrical, you know, buses, fleets, changes in the transportation system like mobility hubs, kind of very broad perspective, which can actually uh, fall into our public finance or municipality finance transactions. And finally, uh, it is actually at the end, but one of the critical things, because the e-mobility is mainly supported with a different wide of startup services, uh, which are providing uh, mobility as a service kind of structures or different supports to the main players. And eventually, any kind of startup financing mechanism is also critical in this market. But today, our main uh, actually focus, uh, we can of course discuss along these in uh, other platforms and other sessions, but our main focus today will be to understand 
the main investments in the production side and how to actually enclose the private sector through corporate financing and project financing and actually try to link the governmental level participation to create a wider country level development in terms of EV market adaptation. So this is actually the context that I will run through in terms of the financing mechanisms today. So when we use when we look into the mobility trends and how actually these trends are financed, of course, loans take up a greater perspective of the uh, of this market. And loan financing is one of the critical aspects. But in terms of using loans, we need to structure these in terms of the climate finance mechanisms that we are bound to use. And I will discuss those a little bit later. Uh, the main market tendency and uh, actually, uh, let's say, problem we face while, while structuring EV structures is the differentiation between used cars and new cars. Because when we are going into the climate finance perspective, our main aim is actually to finance new investments. And as you see in this slide, actually the EV market and mainly in the markets we are operating, like Asia, Greater Asia, Southeast Asia and Central Asia, the EV market is mainly dominated through the purchase of used cars. So this is actually one of the uh, one of the issues that we need to solve when we are trying to structure financing mechanisms in these markets. And as we go along, of course, equity, debt and grant structures are always prevalent, while, as I said, loans are taking the most part of it. However, when we look at the market trends, unfortunately, the low cost debt has not been increased to the perspective we need or to the level we need. So this actually necessitates some kind of mechanisms in our financing structures to lower the cost uh, through different guarantee mechanisms or as we will talk green bond structures which will eventually create some uh, discounts on normal types of financings. So where I am trying to go now is how to actually form what is a green bond and how we actually try to form the green bond in this market. Because when we look at the climate finance instruments which are related to bonds, actually we have different types of instruments to use. Green bonds, social bonds, sustainable bonds and sustainability linked bonds. But the main issue uh, with uh, bond structures is when we have a definite project alignment, I mean, when we have a definite clean transport Tra clean transportation project at hand, and it is actually in line with the eligibility criteria, we like to structure these into green bonds other than sustainability link bonds, because sustainability link bonds are actually do not need a specific project definition. And we are actually structuring those for the sustainability perspective. And as you are following from the market, there are different discussions in terms of uh, greenwashing, the strength of sustainability bonds, how the pricing of them is affecting the market pricings, etc. So when we have a green bond structured, uh, let's say, bonding, actually the greenium effect and the greening effect of it is much uh, stronger. And also it is more adaptable to EV projects that we are uh, trying to do. So as a government, as a bank, or as any other private sector company, if you are trying to structure a green bond, what you have to preliminary do is to form the uh, pipeline. So in EV sector and EV development, if you are actually trying to form a green bond, which will be potentially financing, for example, EV purchases or uh, infrastructure developments, the issue you have to create is actually a definite pipeline or to some extent, 
definite pipeline uh, that which projects will be actually funded through your green bonds. Because in some country examples, actually we have worked in bonding structures which are successful at the start, but due to the lack of pipeline development, actually the bond proceed usage lagged the uh, let's say issuance of the bond so it is very important when you issue a green bond to have it actually idea of what you will be financing in terms of the pipeline and how long it will take and to actually form this green bond structure we have different standards in the market and i will be mainly basing our discussion to the international capital markets associate associations green bond uh, perspective because it is the most prevalent in the market and 90% uh, of the all the transactions in the world are actually uh, performed through the ICMA principles. And in the ICMA principles, when you are actually structuring the bond, you have to define the project as we talked about the green bond structure. You have to define how the fund will be used. And actually, the most critical thing in any climate finance transaction is we have to report the impact. So which project we are doing, how we are calculating the impact, and after the issuance of the bond, how much the bond we used and which with that use of funds, how much impact we created. And this is actually all defined into a bond framework and the main initiation point of any party to issue a green bond is actually to prepare a bond framework which will detail all these main components uh, regarding the green bond structures. So uh, there are details of the components and how we need to structure them. And these are actually open source information, which you can find uh, in the ICMA website through the green bond principles. And uh, these are actually helping us uh, while structuring the green bonds to form an alignment regarding the climate finance perspective of uh, the global climate finance actually commitments. Uh, and as I said, when we are trying to do the green bonds, we need to define a specific project identification. And there are different project categories, but since our main uh, area is EV and related projects, we will be focusing here on the clean transportation side. So if you are structuring a green bond or if you have issued a green bond and trying to uh, finance loans through your green bond proceeds, these are actually the project categories that have been defined. So any kind of electric, hybrid, public rail, non-motorized, multi-loadal transportation, any infrastructure investment for clean energy vehicles, and reduction of harmful emissions is actually mapped under the ICMA green project mapping as a clean transportation project. So these projects would be actually developing or constructing your pipeline and you will be actually creating impact in terms of the climate change mitigation and mainly pollution prevention and control perspectives. So your impacts will be coming from those main areas. And uh, the ICMA also has uh, different uh, mapping structures and how they need to be they need to be reported, which are actually also uh, detailed, uh, you know, standards. And when we look at the clean transport uh, green bond project categories, actually, the, this is one of the areas where we try to define in the ICMA principles and green bond project definitions, but there are also other standards globally, like the Climate Bond Initiative, the Asian Green Bond Project Catalog, the MDB, IDFC climate definitions, which all fit into these different kinds of transport areas, which is similar to the green bond projects that we are talking about. So in any context, if you are using another set of um, 
let's say, a standard or categorization, you have to look into the details of the project definitions in those uh, standards and try to adapt your pipeline or potential investments to those uh, categories. Uh, although in the context of EU taxonomy, we are not a major, major player as the region, but just keep in mind that the EU taxonomy is the most developed and stringent in terms of the use of uh, eligibility criteria and how we use the financings in the market. So if we look at the a second level detailing of the projects and how we are actually trying to report those, depending on which project we put into our green bond, for example, transportation projects where we, we can include procurement, deployment, and also any kind of construction of infrastructure. These are actually all defined under the harmonized framework for impact reporting. And additionally, it is also reported what we need to track as the project is uh, continuing. So uh, when we are doing a green bond or when we are doing a green bond backed green loan structure, actually we need to report the impact that we are creating through the financing of these mechanisms. So it is very clear in terms of the sustainability indicators and other indicators that you need to adapt in your frameworks and how you will structure your bonds and loans. The EV market is actually a little bit easier in terms of EV purchases. For example, if we perform green bond structures, which are mainly based to, uh, let's say, EV purchases, the main indicator we can use is the number of vehicles we financed or number of vehicles we bought, number of vehicles we actually uh, changed kind of indicators. So when you have this kind of a simple actually indicator, green bonding and structuring the green bond proceeds becomes easier in terms of the detailing of the work. So it is an important thing to actually think uh, through the structuring. So sorry for that, I need to go back. Uh, other than of course the green bonding, what we are facing in the market is actually to create the uh, pricing differential to some extent to support the markets, which are mainly using traditional fossil fuel transportation to convert into clean transformation. Uh, the green bond structures in itself are not very uh, competent in terms of decreasing the cost. But when we are performing these structures, what we are able to do is we are able to integrate multilateral banks as part of participators into the green bonds or investors, direct investors into the green bonds, which actually creates a type of concessional finance towards the development and enlargement of these structures. So this becomes important when we are promoting green bonds, where the DFI support can come from actually these blended finance structures. And when we are doing, for example, PPPs for, let's say, infrastructure projects, of course, other guarantee mechanisms that are given for the, by DFIs uh, come to the scene in terms of creating the, uh, let's say viability point and in decreasing the viability gap in our project feasibilities and to be able to actually perform the financings in the structure. So there are of course different kinds of instruments as I mentioned that we can use and we can adapt but it is always important to think of the leverage because when we are doing uh, actually a financing, we want to create a higher leverage in the market so we can replicate the model. When we are looking into, for example, European cases or more developed cases, actually in the EV market, we are currently trying to perform more portfolio-based financings, which are higher in scale because when you reach to that level of scale, actually the economy economies of scale works and your costs for uh, structuring a transaction, for issuing a green bond actually lowers per unit of financing you do. So it is 
always important to think about when we are structuring the financing, how we can actually adapt this to a larger scale in the future. And this is the main issue we are trying to solve in the markets that we are operating in Asia. Just to give you some examples regarding what is done in the market, uh, actually in some countries, for example, like Uzbekistan, uh, ADB is supporting a green electric vehicle program. And this is not only in Uzbekistan, but six other countries related in the region where there is a loan financing and the funds will mainly use these funds will be mainly used actually to uh, deploy fleet of electric buses and support the infrastructure and improve the public transport system in different cities and municipalities. When we look at two different actually structures at the government side, we also see these direct sovereign loans from multilateral banks, which are uh, actually used uh, similarly to deploy electric buses in the transportation of the cities and the countries and converting the country's uh, adaptation to uh, actually electric uh, vehicles. And just to give an example of a bank case, uh, for example, this is one of the deals which has been uh, like a market maker in Kazakhstan, where uh, we have placed a, a bond, a green bond, which was around $20 million. And uh, this $20 million, $10 million, $20 million, that is actually the range that we are able to do in uh, this kind of market scene for green bonds. And what we we have done in terms of the green bond structuring is to include environmentally friendly transport as a project type in the green bond. So through the issuance of this bank, we can actually support the customers, the clients in corporate, uh, SME and other segments to actually purchase electric vehicles and perform uh, other leases in the environmental friendly transport structures. So these are actually three main examples that I wanted to link with uh, the details that I tried to explain. Uh, I hope it was clear and we can now pass on to any question and other related uh, open points you have on the topic. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sam, uh, for that. That was that was super interesting, and uh, yeah, a really solid introduction to, to green bonds in particular, uh, which I know is just just one of a, a menu of of um, financial instruments that you, which can be deployed, which you, you you touched on a wider wider body as well. And uh, I feel like we we covered a a lot of ground there, and um, there's yeah. so much so much more that we we could have we could have covered if we if we had more time. So so thank you thank you so much. Um, I just want to invite everybody, of course, to, to submit their questions in the in the Q and A, um, and and we'll we'll pick them up um, as they come in. Um, j just for starters, I, I I know that sort of Central Asia also has been a, a sort of strong focus of your of your work, um, and I just wanted to ask really about the the applicability and transferability of of green bonds to to other parts of the Asia Pacific. What what sort of similarities and differences you see between different markets? Um, reflecting on different levels of EV readiness and, and development as well. So I don't know if that's a that's a question you can you can take to to kick us off with. Yeah, sure. Uh, that's actually very important because different levels of country development uh, mainly affects the size when we talk about the green bond structures, uh, the size that we can get in those structures. So if the market is more developed and there are more uh, like suppliers, importers and producers, what we are able to do is we are able to create a, a larger pipeline that can be backed with green bonds and green loans. And this, of course, facilitates the market. So in the examples that we have done in the Asian perspective, uh, the structure that I talked here is actually similar. But of course, the Asian countries have um, an ability to use 
other than ICMA principles, the Asian principle standards, which are actually very similar to what we talked, but it is actually a different standard uh, that has been identified. But other than that, the main structure and how we develop is very similar. And since the markets are more developed, what we are able to do is, for example, in Central Asia, a potential green bond in a new market could be around like 10, 15 million dollars, where in Southeast Asia, we are able to do transactions around 30, 50 million dollars. And when you increase the transaction, actually the investor base increases. So that is the idea behind it. So trying to do a larger uh, deal uh, that is actually supporting this kind of green projects will be more attracted by the investors and also will have a higher leverage effect in the market for the future transactions. So it will create this uh, duplicate or how can I say transformative effect. Uh, and that is what we are actually seeing in Southeast Asia when we look into the investments in the EV market. Amazing, thank you, Kyoso. And we, we have a question, a question in the chat from uh, Ernesto, um, who asks: We presently started using EV in public transportation, but yeah. right now it's difficult to expand due to difficulty in loans. Um, yeah. Are you able to to provide any any sort of insights on on that one? So. Yeah. Uh... It is actually in reference to, I think, is city transportation, as far as I understand. And in city transformation, uh, mainly we need the uh, support of uh, some kind of um, multilateral development bank in terms of concessional finance, because the municipality structures and financing budgets uh, usually do not give the uh, ability or the feasibility to transfer transform the whole fleet into this new structure. And it is not only EV purchase, because you have to change also your transportation system, uh, which was based on fossil fuel transportation. You need to put more mobility-based applications. It will have IT-related project integration, which actually increase the cost. So the preliminary in the preliminary development cost of cities and municipalities, uh, it is always uh, an uh, actually uh, an issue of creating a pre-development kind of development finance or financing structure, uh, but we can also further talk from the perspective of ADB. Super, thank, thank you. Awesome. And, and we have a, a question from uh, Robert Kang, and uh, Robert, you put your hand up. Um, so I'll, I'll allow you to come in and um, and, and mute your, your microphone, just, just ask you if you can if you can pose um, that question, um, that'd be that'd be great. Yes, thank you, Tom. I'm from the Philippines. I'm Robert Kang. We yeah. we already in the Philippines. We have public utility vehicle modernization program. We are changing our old public transport into modern one, but yeah. we prefer to use electric vehicles. As of now, we run forty one electric jeeps in General Santos City, mm -hmm. and because of hard time uh, uh, getting additional loan from our government banks because this is a nationwide program. So we are having a mm -hmm. hard time and we are still looking for uh, agencies to finance our electric vehicles in General Santos City. We are dedicating more routes for green vehicles. That is why mm -hmm. I joined for this uh, webinar today to ask what's the possibility for having a loan from ADB. Thank you. Uh, I will pass it uh, to ADB staff, uh, but before that, just want to add one uh, one issue regarding this uh, city level uh, financing. Because when we talked from the perspective of green bond, there has been examples which we have actually completed for cities. The cities itself can also actually issue green bonds or sustainable bonds to support this kind of developments, which are also uh, attracted by the investors. So this is also a potential to think about in the future, other than the loan perspective. Uh, but if Joanna <laughs> can jump in. Yeah, regarding the, the second part of the question. Um, sure. Yeah, I, I guess... 
we can be in touch uh, with you uh, separately on that. I think um, that would be a better platform to discuss uh, those kinds of issues. Thank you. Yeah, but uh, but but great that we can um, yeah, we we have access and visibility to, uh, to to the challenges, Robert, and we can we can pick pick those up off offline afterwards. Um, I'm, I'm conscious conscious of the time uh, a little bit. We're we're running slightly over. We've got a question. If we take take one one final question, possibly from from, uh, from Echo. Um, to Echo asks uh, in the case of Indonesia, in order to develop uh, an EV ecosystem. Um, how to link and structure between financing and green bonds, and is it channeling the bank or could uh, be directly to the private sectors? So I guess it's a, a question relating to that that balance between public and private sector financing. Um, exactly. Mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, uh, when we look into the green bond development of countries, of course, it is always important because the first thing we analyze is how the public financing versus the uh, private financing is uh, the proportion. And since I know the Indonesia case, uh, uh, I would say it is a good platform for Indonesia to actually perform the development from private sector development through banks, uh, which are strong in the market. So uh, just to, uh, since we are talking about Indonesia case, we can also uh, think that the same structure we talked here in the green bonds are also applicable to green sukuk. So if you have an Islamic finance structure, which you can use, you can apply all the green principles we talked about to the skuk structures also. So since Indonesia is an issuer in this respective through many private players that we also track, it could be a different, uh, it could be mainly coming from private sector, it should be actually mainly coming from private sector issuances which can go directly into green bond or even green skook islamic finance structures oh, thanks thanks awesome. and I, i'm just i'm conscious that ernesto who asked our first question um, has his has his hand up um ernesto i don't know if you you wanted to come in and um clarify uh, anything on your on, on on your question or the response that Oslan gave or is that a is that a legacy hand I'm not sure uh, uh, hello can you hear me we can yes can you hear welcome me? okay uh, actually I'm also from the Philippines together with uh, Robert Kang but uh, he's from the northern part of the Philippines in General Santo City and we are from uh, National Capital Region and in Manila area. So uh, like, like what I've said before, uh, actually I have invited uh, some of my friends here that uh, uh, using the traditional internal combustion engine uh, in their public transportation. And uh, since they saw our uh, operations who uses 100% uh, electric vehicle in our fleet, they saw that uh, uh, the, the, our uh, operation is uh, good and uh, it's sustainable also. So they wanted also to hear from, from your side. And of course, we, me also, how can uh, we uh, make this uh, loan for for our uh, public transportation to be changed from uh, using those uh, a vehicle that uses the fossil fuel into uh, a solar or electric uh, electric vehicle to help our uh, our community and of course our earth uh, against this uh, climate change uh, uh, disasters that uh, we're about to face and uh, that's the our main uh, question right now is how can we uh, have this uh, how can we access this uh, this uh, green funds the green financial fina green financing for electric vehicle thank you okay uh 
Thank you, uh, Ernesto. Uh, actually, I did understand there will be a bilateral talk uh, from uh, ADB on this, but I just want to give also one more perspective, which could be um, applicable to the uh, to your country, the Philippines case, because I worked in some solar projects there. When we are doing uh, this kind of structures like EV mechanisms and other mechanisms, there is also a potential to use the, uh, you know, suppliers of EVs as a backup uh, in the uh, structure. So since you are transforming the fleet and as the transformation of the fleet, you are purchasing uh, and in terms of actually importing or uh, getting a deal in terms of the uh, transformation of the fleet, actually the equipment providers, in some uh, cases, we can also structure equipment uh, producers or vehicle producers and vehicle importers to actually support the project through some, uh, let's say, concessional agreement-based financing as project parties. So that could be also a potential case to consider if you have the mapping of project parties which are involved in this transformation. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, um, thank you, Ernesto, and and, and for, for for everybody who's who's asked uh, a question today, uh, I think we, we really really appreciate the engagement, and and thank you to to Oslem for for taking the time uh, to to share your your insights and your expertise um, with sure, the with the group. I think we've, <laughs> yeah. we've had a had a good attendance, and um, pretty much everybody stayed on stayed on the line to the end, which is always a always a good sign. Um, so I think we, we have run run a little bit over, so we'll we'll, we'll, we'll draw this to a close. Um, but just just wanted to highlight before we do um, the next webinar same time next week on EV road mapping development. So that'll be that'll be Stuart Clapham um, from ITP sharing his sharing his knowledge um, there. So hopefully we can we can see uh, see you all again um, same time next week. Um, but thank you everybody wherever you're joining us from and whether it's morning, afternoon or, or evening. Um, and yeah we look forward to look forward to seeing you again the next next webinar. Um, thank you and goodbye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you.